and welcome to our whistle stop guide to how we make a program. Wir haben uns wirklich darauf gefreut, dieses Jahr nach Lübeck zurückzukommen. Im Jahre 1990 sind wir zum ersten Mal zum Festival gekommen und es wurde schnell zu einem unserer Lieblingsorte auf der ganzen Welt, was Aufführung und Lehrmöglichkeiten angeht. Obwohl das Festival dieses Jahr nur virtuell stattfinden kann, sind wir trotzdem sehr froh, dass wir immer noch mit Ihnen irgendwie in Verbindung treten können, auch wenn es nur durch diesen Bildschirm erfolgen kann. Today we thought we'd try and give you a very quick guide to how we make a program. We'll look at the whole process from inception to development, researching and talking to experts, picking up the right structure and creating an emotional journey for the audience. Finally, we'll talk about curating the live experience, and hopefully you'll come away with some fresh perspective on how we go about this important part of our work. We create around 10 different programs every year to offer to concert promoters, and it's fair to say we've tried quite a few different approaches to making those programs. So let's start at the very beginning. A program idea can come from many different places, from hearing a single piece of music, from seeing something on TV, as you're out walking, or even when you're in the shower. The idea might sit at the back of your mind, with the edges of the concept slowly taking shape over time. Or it might happen that when you get that idea seed, shortly after, a full program emerges. The six of us all contribute to creating our programs. Like with many aspects of our work, we make sure that it's a collaborative process. The more buy-in there is from each of us, the better we will be on stage, because we all believe in what we're performing. That's really important. Choosing music for a program is like painting a house. Expect it to take at least 10 times longer than you think it will. Experience helps in knowing the sorts of music that might fit a theme, or your specific bunch of singers, or even the acoustics of a particular venue. So when a program concept pops into your head, make sure you've explored all avenues of it, even the dead ends. Our big program this year is Finding Harmony. This was a slow burner type of idea. While we were touring the world over the last few years, we saw so many divisions between countries or sometimes even within them. We slowly came to the realization that music had the power to transcend those divides. And so a program looking at this power of music across cultures and throughout history started to emerge. So once you have your theme or your concept, think about how you can best develop it. Is that going to be by wading through Wikipedia articles? Or will it be by collaborating with a composer or a writer or an author or an artist? Or does it need guidance from experts in that area? Think about the specific approach to research that your concept will need. And don't underestimate the importance of good, thorough research. As we said earlier, Always explore every possible avenue. You never know what you'll find down there. With Finding Harmony, we all spent months and months with our noses in the history books. And this gave us a really diverse long list of moments throughout history where music had brought oppressed people together. From 16th century European Protestant Reformation to the apartheid in South Africa and right through to the Time's Up movement in 2018. And this point is where the experts came in. Obviously, we weren't experts in all of these areas that we were exploring, so we set about finding people that could teach us more. We were choosing music from countries and communities that had been divided or persecuted, so being sensitive to cultural appropriation was incredibly important. 
We contacted musicologists and composers and arrangers and historians and language coaches, so we ended up with a huge pool of experts who we could talk to about authenticity and get more cultural insight than we were finding on our Wikipedia articles. And many of these experts have become good friends of the group ever since, and that for us is a great byproduct of this project. So now let's think about the source of the musical content. We personally think that the strength of a programme comes from the integrity of the compositions and arrangements. In Finding Harmony, the music was arranged for us by people with direct links to those historical episodes. For example, Cielito Lindo, a Mexican song, was arranged for us by our friend Jorge Cotatl, who we met when we were singing in Mexico City a few years ago. And it's so thrilling for us to sing because of Jorge's deep understanding of the flavours and colours of his language and culture. Here's a little snippet right from the end of Cielito Lindo. concept sorted and you've researched some music. So the next stage is to shape this into a program with some structure and some coherence. And this is a bit like putting together a three-part jigsaw puzzle. The things you've got to think about are the structure of the program, the emotional journey that the audience will go on, and the live experience in the space as you give your concert. These things will all inform each other and hopefully be shaped hand in hand, but we're going to deal with them one by one. And I'm going to start by talking a little bit about your options for how to structure the programme and how to order the music into a coherent concert programme. There are two key questions for this, really. Firstly, how do you want your audience to feel as you're giving your concert? What emotions will they go through while you're singing? And then the second thing is, what are they going to take home? They can't remember every moment of the concert, but what is it they're going to be humming as they drive home? What are they going to be telling their friends about? And what will stick with them, possibly, for the rest of their lives? Lots of that has to do with the programme structure and how you put your pieces together in order. So I thought I'd give you maybe four suggestions as to some concert formats which have worked really well for us and the King Singers over the years. One of these is feature and sequence, where you select a handful of pieces which are like your headlines and which you contrast with shorter pieces. Another format is cabaret style, where you're essentially doing a recital and introducing each piece one by one. Another format is a through-going sequence where there's no applause, you create your atmosphere, and you just move from one piece into the next seamlessly. A fourth one is groups of songs, and this is possibly the one that's been used most by the King Singers over the years. Traditionally, the group's gone chronologically in sets of five pieces, from early music through to the modern. But more lately, we've been mixing up a little bit, and in our example program of Finding Harmony, these sets of pieces were actually grouped by historical episode rather than by chronology. So we grouped together the songs into the stories we were trying to tell through the course of the program. And actually juxtaposing different historical episodes and different geographical areas actually helped to highlight how the concept of the program was timeless. And so here's a little example of that sort of juxtaposition from the end of Bird's Ne Irascaris Domine into the South African song Ai Chlome.
Now let's think about the emotional journey. A live performance has the power to send the listener on a journey. We think that within a concert, audiences should laugh, cry, be thoughtful, and ultimately thoroughly entertained. The course of the emotional journey is all down to what song goes where. Important attributes to think about here are the subject matter, speed, duration, moods, keys, genres and languages, and the popularity of songs. For us, a successful programme has a good variety of all these ingredients mixed together thoughtfully. So experiment with moving songs around to uncover different emotional journeys before picking one that works well. So see where the emotions go, and it will avoid it feeling like a Spotify playlist on shuffle. There are so many different journeys a programme can make, so always think about the connection the audience has with the music and let that guide your decisions. For example, we found that our Finding Harmony programme could easily have had too many slow pieces in it. So we made sure to add something with a faster energy into every group of songs to keep everyone on the edge of their seats. You're almost there. So now we're going to talk about curating the live experience. You should always run your programme through before you perform it in front of an audience. This is your opportunity to imagine how they're going to feel and to see if you want to make any changes. Be flexible. Know that at this point anything can still change and that's in your control. And even once you've performed the programme a few times, if you realise there are things you'd like to change even more, then that's your prerogative. You can do that. Here are three things that we often revisit when we're making these final changes by curating the live experience. First one Pat mentioned, go back and look for sequences, look for moments where you might not need to take a new musical note because you end in one key and you continue in either the same key or a related key. That allows you to maintain tension rather than having to break it by getting a new note. A second thing you might want to do is to think about exactly where you're going to announce. Now we do quite a lot of talking from the stage because we love to tell our audiences about what we're singing. We think it's important that they have as much information as they can to be able to appreciate the music as much as possible. But you don't want to put announcements everywhere necessarily because otherwise you might break the flow. So think about whether your announcements are in exactly the right places or whether you want to try and change them and even whether you might want to make them a bit shorter. There's so much good content in Finding Harmony, for instance, that most of our announcements were becoming history lectures, so we really had to focus on making them shorter so that they were as palatable as possible for an audience. Now, the final thing you want to revisit is to just think about the order of the pieces again. Have you got the right pieces in the right places to make your audience feel what you want them to feel at different points of the programme? Did that piece at the end of the first half have the power you thought it would? Do they need a change of mood before they go into the interval? We like to think about all of these things when we are programming to make sure that the program has as much impact as possible. Now, in Finding Harmony, a lot of the material is very serious because we're talking about very serious issues. And so we thought it might be nice to use some humor right before the interval to get people laughing and, and thinking in a slightly more positive way before they went out for a break. That's where we found this piece in the Scottish Highlands. It comes after some quite sad pieces about people being forced to leave their homes. But it's called Push the Veal, which translates as mouth music from Gaelic. And in it, we imitate several instruments, including bagpipes, fiddles, and a Jews harp, pretty badly. Here's a clip from that piece. <laughs> So just for fun and to challenge ourselves, we're going to have a go at making our very own brand new programme in just five minutes. Pat's going to uh, select a word randomly using a random word generator. Pat? Orange. 
Orange. Red. Okay. Orange. 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 No, but you, I think, tangentially linked to things which are orange. So that oranges and lemons, is that the yeah, one yeah, of them? Um, and then maybe um, orange as a sort of the, the orange glow of a sunset. Yeah, I don't know, like, 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 like the warmth there's of a half, like the glow. The glow, okay. orange glow of a, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, or yeah. Or Seville oranges? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but I was going to buy this, but I think you could do something which is really easily quite a, a serious first half. Oh, does anyone know anything about the orange trait? As in, like, is there a sort of a route that I guess that's California. what I want? Oh, yeah, California, a bit of Beach Boys. But yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah and Florida Orange is there, isn't it? Yeah, Florida Black Pretty. He's got a terrible one every time. You've also got vitamin C, or just generally feeling good, that kind of. Okay, wait, I'm going to look up the top like five producers of orange and see if there's like a geographical thing. Because <laughs> nice. ultimately, yeah, we've now got loads of different ideas. Should we get, some, try and, like, get yeah. some sections to we'll focus on? I think the. the so the Netherlands thing is a good place. I would, I would do a first half based on that because I think we can very easily do a, an interesting first half, mm-hmm. maybe ending with the last group, which is really funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so the, starting with a piece like Arvind yeah, Negro at the beginning, which is of course also Flemish. Um, tangential. 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 Hmm? tangential. tangential. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't you do that? Arvind Negro, so the orange. No, Villette. Yeah. Dutch. Okay. So if, if the first half is Dutch, I think that that's like. And then the second half we can do the colour orange. Okay. I think that's the easy way of... Do enough people know about... That's what we teach them. We'll have an orange place. Orange place. The first yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's... Yeah. Well, maybe we need to try and find some, some piece that specifically references William of Orange as being a thing. And that could be the sort of starting point. Okay. Like, it, it's, yeah, the, yeah. So it's, it's the, like the Dutch national colours when they have like King's Day and everyone's just all in orange. Okay. Could, could, could also, orange. just, just for another bit of trouble, could, could we also develop this into using oranges and lemons as a kind of like... The, the title piece mm. could it be more about the kind of the more kid stuff nursery type type angle certainly for part of it or, or could we build on orange and add it could we then do a program of kind of you know contrast so orange and lemon is very contrasting mm. so bittersweet um, happy sad I don't know like, or is that is that a bit too I like the Dutch game yeah only because only, only because the Dutch thing yeah I'm, I'm sort of feeling a little bit what Pat's saying which is it Although I like it as a kind of it's a nice it's a nice kind of option to have. Two left. Or okay. um, top five exports of orange: Spain, South Africa, Egypt, United States, and Netherlands. In that order. Well, you've got four countries nice. that we already have, yeah. have music from. Yeah. 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 So maybe maybe it's the to get both ideas. You have that that sort of juxtaposition. The first half is this sort of um, inspiring inspiration from. The country of orange, and you know, William Orange turned carrots orange for the entire world. Yeah. Um, so it's not like his legacy. It's not just the country. It's yeah. The, you know, I um, don't know so much about William of Orange. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's really, it's really. Why do you not? It's quite. <laughs> it's, so yeah, like it's, it's quite. It's quite. It's quite sort of central to Dutch identity. Okay, so we need to think about structure. So do you think starting the second half with straight in those orange and lemons because that's quite. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah it's a nice start. Grabbing, yeah, that's grabbing really start. Thanks, that. Um, I would do Kokomo at some point in the second half. Kokomo and Lysi. One minute. One minute left. Okay, we need to get okay, so down as quick as possible. Right, so I've got first half Netherlands, Kings 18, second half Starkey, Orange and Nuts. And then okay. pop Kokomo in uh, as close harmony right. section towards the end. Mm-hmm. What are the countries again? South Africa? Um, yeah, South Africa, Spain, Egypt. Who do you think of the Latin Why do the horizons? Just a really easy piece. Horizons. Second half. Uh, uh, yeah. Second half, half orange is lemons, and then we do what? What was the? Do you commission on the Egyptian composer? No, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to finish. So we end with America, and we have like twenty six boys, our father, Kokomo, and something. Yeah. Good vibrations or something. Yeah. To end. Okay. Then what was the other country? We put South Africa, orange and lemons, South Africa, something in America. Yeah. Uh, US. Netherlands, US, Spain. 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 So Spain. three, three, three Four. Spanish. La Tripotea. No, why would we do three of the Catalans? Three of the yeah, Catalans. Yeah, like, yeah. like, like yeah. two, Philadora, yeah. whatever. Tanta. 
Okay, well, let's just finish it off anyway. It's not a great program. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's quite a good program. I disagree with you. And the title is Orange with Lemon. Yeah, the lemons. We need a little bit more lemon zest in it, don't we, at some point? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, I think it, it depends if you. Put the pee of the bells. Oh. Very much really. Yes, this is excellent. This is a dangerous yeah. program. Yeah, you can dust Roy to be fire. <laughs> that could be the off Yeah. Did that work? Nice. Right. Sweet. So we got close. So there you have it, a bit of an insight into how we work through the process of developing a program. Hopefully we'll get to actually perform one of these soon. Well, we can't wait to return to Schleswig-Holstein Music Festival to perform and teach. And in the meantime, good luck with creating your own musical journeys. Take care, stay safe, and see you soon. Cheers.